All right, you guys, let's talk about wedging. Um, so right now, you can see this piece of clay here. This has actually been um, from the pug mill. So it's nice and smooth. It's got sort of a flat top, flat bottom. Um, the sides aren't too bad. I mean, you're gonna have a little bit of this from being in the bag, even something like that, but it's okay. This has been um, pugged, which means that it has all the air pockets out of it. If you get a piece of clay that's like this, or sometimes it might be a little bit bigger, but still flat on the top and the bottom, that's brand new clay, just use it. You don't have to do anything to it. But if you get a piece that looks like it's been like put together and mangled or whatever, something along these lines, you are going to want to wedge it. Because what happens is you have two pieces of clay or more that have been put together, and now you have air pockets in between them. If you um, don't wedge the clay and those air pockets stay in your clay, then you will um, have an explosion in the kiln because the air wants to escape from your sculpture and if it doesn't have a way of getting out, then we run into problems. Um, so I'm gonna teach you how to wedge. So you're just gonna take your piece of clay. This is a really good way to get out your anger um, or frustration if you have any during that day. And you're just gonna pound it on your clay cloth. And you're gonna pick it up. I like to turn it over and pound it again. And pick it up and turn it over and pound it. And I do that often. I like to turn it on all of the sides just so I know I'm really, really smashing it and getting all of that, um, all of those air pockets out. The bigger piece of clay, the more you have to wedge. The smaller piece of clay, the less you have to wedge. So I'm really trying to pound it out here. And I want to roll this out so I'm not really making a cube anymore, I'm just making it really flat. All right, so this should be good enough. It's pretty flat, pretty wedged. There's no, there's some creases in it as you can see, but there's no like big giant crevices. You're gonna have some creases and that's okay. Um, okay, let's talk about rolling out a slab. So once you have your piece of clay here, this is still pretty thick. You don't wanna roll it out just yet. Um, it's gonna take you a long time. So we do something called pancaking. So you're gonna use your hands like this, put the piece of clay in, you're gonna go like this and you're gonna throw it back and once you get super close to your clay cloth, you're gonna whip your hand backwards. Um, so I'm gonna hold the cloth with my one hand so that it doesn't go anywhere and I'm gonna go like this and whip my hand back. I'll come up, whip my hand back and I keep turning it over. You can see that I pick it up and I turn it over. What this is doing is it's stretching the clay out. So I'm pick it up and turn it over again and you can see it's getting longer and it's also getting skinnier. So you can see now that thickness is really skinny. This is good, I can roll it out now. So we're gonna roll out a slab. Here's a rolling pin. Um, there's ones that have handles on it. I prefer this kind, you get to prefer whatever kind you want. When you're rolling it out, make sure you're using the palm of your hand, don't use your fingertips. Your fingertips aren't strong enough and you'll get a really wavy and bumpy piece of clay and that's not what you want. When you have a slab, you want it to be as smooth and even as possible. I always start in the middle and I roll back and forth like this, a little bits of dried clay on there and that's okay. As you can see, I'm not going off the edges. You don't wanna do that. I like to pick it up often because the clay gets stuck to my clay cloth. If you want it wider, turn it horizontally and then keep rolling. So you can see I do just a little bit of it and then I continue to pick it up and roll it out. All right, so I'm gonna just do one more pass probably. It's getting pretty thin here. And let's see, that's pretty good. So this thickness right here is good. You want your thickness to be between a half inch and a quarter inch. This is probably more towards a quarter inch, but it's still good. If you go thinner, your piece of artwork is gonna fall apart on you and you do not want that to happen. So make sure you keep it thicker. If you're gonna do something that's really heavy, you want it more towards that half inch. All right, last thing for this video tutorial. I wanna show you how to score and slip. So when you score and slip, you should have a knife or some kind of wooden tool, it really doesn't matter, something that can just make marks in your clay. When you use the knife, 
you can see that there's a little divot here. That goes on the top. I have a lot of people who try to use to cut this, use this to cut, doesn't work out so well. Use the other side, which is skinnier. It'll make your life a whole lot easier. So you need a clay, you need a knife or a wooden tool, and then you need some slip. So it looks like this slip needs a little bit of water. And I wanted to show you this specifically because it's still wet, it's not bad, but it needs some standing water in it. So after I'm done here, I'm gonna go get some water from the sink and just make sure there's like a puddle of water in here. It's gonna make it really nice. Okay, so let's say um, I wanna put, I don't know, let's make this a, uh, a box. Let's say I wanna just put a box on my piece of clay and I didn't cut all the way through because I didn't want to make marks on my other clay. Let's say I wanted to put this on. This is some kind of decoration for my piece. Clay is moist so it's going to stick on here no matter what. If I push it on there it's going to stick but once it dries it won't stick anymore. You have to use slip. Slip is glue for clay. If you do not use slip everything will fall off. If you don't score it it won't stick either so you have to make sure you score and slip. So I'm going to put this right here. I want to score where it's going to go. Scoring is making marks in your clay. I typically will make sure they're like X's. If you're doing a bigger piece of clay like this, you need a lot because you don't want an air pocket to be underneath this piece of clay. I also need to score the back of this. They are not perfect by any means, just marks that are crisscrossing over each other. So I got a good amount on both of these. I'm then gonna take my slip here and I'm gonna put it on here. You wanna put it on like you're icing a cupcake or a cake or whatever, but you don't wanna see a lot of those marks. What the scoring does is it creates a suction cup. So if you don't have that suction cup, your clay piece that you're adding on may not stick on there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick these two pieces. I'm gonna press it down like sort of smashing it on there. I can't just daintily put it on there or else it's not gonna stick. I'm gonna smash it down. Now I need to um, smooth it out because it doesn't look good, does it? So smoothing out my edges here. You always wanna make sure you finish off your stuff. You don't just wanna stick something on and just leave it. Finish it off, make it smooth. If you're gonna have a texture on it, make sure it looks like it was supposed to be there and not that you were just lazy and didn't do anything. So there's a couple of marks there that my fingers aren't able to reach. So I'm gonna just take my knife and really gently smooth those places out right there. That one's really stubborn. All right, and then I have this piece. Now this is suction cupped on and it's my part of my decoration. So you learned three things today. You learned wedging, you learned how to roll out a slab, and now you learned how to score and slip. Um, hope this helps you in the future.